my spare time, when I take breaks, I like to indulge in a crossword puzzle or two. I know that you are into these as well. Huge fan of crossword puzzles. You know what the words ort and eft mean? Yes, and I also know what an eight is, and I'm saying A-I-T for those spellers at home. The other day I did a crossword puzzle, and there were some eerie coincidences in it that had to do with our show. Really? Here were some of the clues. Landon of 1930s politics. That's Alf Landon, who we mentioned in Swing Time, episode 22. Actress Lupino. Ida, who directed The Bigamist, episode 71. And starred in it. And movie Inuit, Nanook. Of course, our first episode, Nanook of the North. Now, these three clues being in one puzzle isn't that crazy, but when I started to look closer, I saw other connections that weren't quite so clear, such as 70s Night Spot, Disco, Saturday Night Fever, episode number 18. Pretzels, basically. Knots, The Ghost and Mr. Chicken, episode 39. Egg Layer, Flop. Ishtar, episode 72. <laughs> Some NCOs. Sergeants, catch 22, episode 73. Small Digit, Pinky, Heist, episode 48. Have a one-track mind, Obsess, which was what I was doing at that moment. So is there a conspiracy here, or are these mere coincidences? I think it's a mere coincidence. It's like right before D-Day, the London Times put out a crossword puzzle that accidentally had most of the code words oh, really? in the crossword puzzle. Western U.S. State, Utah, Nebraska City, Omaha. You These know, are like the names of the... Uh, yeah, the code names for the beaches and stuff. I don't know what Will Shorts is trying to tell me, but... Uh... I think he's a fan of the show. All right. Just, most people would send a letter, but Will Shorts, he got style. <laughs> I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good. It might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to the basement. Dump, 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 dump. May continues here in the basement, and that means this is part two of Audience Appreciation Month, where we watch a movie that our audience has suggested to us over and over again. The last movie that we watched here in May, Phantom of the Paradise, was suggested a lot of times. Tonight's film was suggested at least twice as much. And if you thought Phantom of the Paradise was weird, you better strap in, Bubby. It's about to get a whole lot weirder up in here. We may never get to see Yordowski's Dune, but we get to see Yordowski's The Holy Mountain. Holy Mountain! Exciting stuff. I have no idea what to expect here. Released in 1973, director Alejandro Yordowski attempted to put himself in a deep spiritual place to make this film. Before the principal photography would commence, he and his wife spent a week without sleep under the guidance of a Japanese Zen master. Cheaper than LSD, man. He gets to that as well. <laughs> okay. He and the central members of the cast spent three months doing various spiritual practices, such as Zen, Sufi, and yoga exercises, along with concepts drawn from the Kabbalah, I Ching, and the teachings of George Gurdjieff. Senor Yorodowski also took LSD for inspiration and administered psilocybin mushrooms to the cast before shooting a key scene in the film. I'm just going to guess the first scene and every scene after it. <laughs> Real happy you chose this because I have been meaning to see this and El Topo, but I just couldn't imagine the day of my life where I was like, yes, I'm ready now. That's the good thing about this show. Ready or not, here we come. Well, it's my understanding that this is a very surreal film, and so I wanted to get you a gift that was weird. It was going to freak you out a little bit. Oh. <laughs> it's an eyeball in a larger ball. Think of that as your mind's eye, which is about to be opened and expanded by this film. Third eye right there. Well, young seeker, pilgrim, come venture with us up the steep slopes of the holy mountain to the old leather couch where we will watch the holy mountain <laughs> how are you all right you ready here we go alan klein presents the rolling stones <laughs> the holy mountain begins with a priest and a couple of ladies the shamwow is amazing it will clean women's faces. A man with a crazy hat on strips two women naked, shaves them bald, and then hugs them. <laughs> you will now predict future crimes. Get into this tub of water. There's a guy laying out in the middle of a bunch of rubble. Is he dead? I'm not sure. But these children seem to want answers. And they pick him up and they pin him onto a cross. And hey, he's not dead at all. This is the main character of our film. Yeah! He's about to launch into Won't Get Fooled Again. <laughs> he meets a little guy and they become fast friends. 
I like you. I like the way you taste. <laughs> Let's go to town. We see a series of executions. And the American tourists are just eating it up. Pharaohs flew out of his chest like he's some kind of pigeon pie at a <laughs> Lannister wedding. <laughs> but then comes the big show. The conquest of Mexico. Hey, check it out, I'm Coronado. When the Spanish conquistadors came over in toad form and took over. Apocalyptoed. <laughs> and then everything blew up, just like history. And that's how he became the celebrated jumping frog of San Joaquin County. <laughs> All right, on to the next weird thing. Our hero comes across a couple of Roman soldiers, and he does a little drinking with them. He passes out. They take him back to the potato room, where they make a mold out of him. And when he wakes up... <laughs> he freaks out. That is a pretty darn cool shot. That's an amazing shot there. He walks around town, he meets a lady with a monkey. And she falls in love with him. Is this before or after the thief eats off the Christ face? I, I don't know anymore, but she falls in love with him, and she keeps following him for the rest of the movie. Our hero comes upon a tall tower, and there's a hook that lowers down from it. He jumps on that hook and goes up into that tower. I'm gonna go up here and talk with Simon of the Desert. He goes through this kind of organic-looking tube. <laughs> Come on, you're just supposed to burst through that like a high school football team. Please welcome the Mexican City Cougars! <laughs> and he comes out in a big rainbow room. It's the gay pride vault. And there's that priest. From the beginning of the movie, you know, the stripper and shaver. They get into a little scuffle. I didn't think we'd be seeing kung fu in yeah. this. This man is an alchemist. Do you want gold? And he's gonna create gold. Out of what, you may ask? That's right, doo-doo. This is alchemy in action. You've heard about alchemy, this is it. He takes this man's uh, produce, and there's an elaborate process where he turns it into gold. A little molecular gastronomy here. I've heard of hot shit, but this is crazy! <laughs> you are excrement. You can change yourself into gold. The alchemist takes the thief to the tarot room. <laughs> I like to call this really easy twister. The alchemist takes the man into a gallery full of human statues. Cut the peacocks of the shot. <laughs> the great people of the solar system. On Venus, we have Fawn. Fawn controls a mattress factory. And he has a bunch of wives. He only has relations with them during working hours. He manufactures masks and artificial body parts. And he also uh, animates corpses so that they can do tricks. They can kiss their family goodbye. <laughs> Isla. My planet is Mars. You may ask yourself, is there life on Mars? And I say to you, yes, David Bowie, there is. Me, Isla, a person from <laughs> Mars. I know what I'm talking about, so shut up. She sells weapons. Funky looking weapons that she makes because it appeals to like teenagers. My name is Clen. My planet is Jupiter. And he runs an art factory, and he also has a sex simulation machine. With this electronic rod, he will rub its mechanical vagina. If you're no good at the sex, you can't make the machine have an orgasm. But if you are... Boy, this is like HAL 10,000. <laughs> but if you use it right, it spreads out for you and gives you a little baby sex machine. Just think if this was the first time you ever saw sex in a movie, how terrified you'd be. <laughs> <laughs> On Saturn, we meet a clown named Cell. Oh, finally something a little wholesome. This couldn't possibly get twisted and weird. Yep. Welcome to the Hunger Games. <laughs> she makes toys. <laughs> War toys. We manufacture hypersexed brown native vampires. <laughs> Never thought... I'd ever hear that combination of words <laughs> in any context. Then we get to the next planet. You know that one. My planet is Uranus. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's the financial advisor to the president. In the end, he just kind of hates his job and his wife and cake. I hate you! I hate you! I hate you! Neptune, we meet Axon. I am the chief of police. Who rules Bartertown? <laughs> 
There's a boy tied to a table in front of him, and this happens. Shouldn't have talked about Fight Club. And he goes down and he wipes out a whole bunch of protesters. And loot is from Pluto. My planet is Pluto. Not a, Not planet. a planet. Neil deGrasse Tyson hates this movie because of that line. <laughs> All of these space people get together and they come to the Alchemist's Tower. We're gonna go off and gain enlightenment. Where do you get enlightenment? At the Holy Mountain! They speak of holy mountains. The Mero Mountain of India. The Karakorum of the Himalaya. The Mountain of the Philosophers. Space Mountain of Florida. Gander Mountain, where you can buy camping supplies. Sugar Mountain, where Neil Young would like to live on. Where the immortals live, and how they need to go there, and they need to steal the secret of immortality from them. Any human being can become enlightened. Have I mentioned that I can make gold out of Boom Boom? <laughs> but first, they need to get ready. Burn your money. They need to burn all their money. They need to burn their own effigies. Now we will go camping. <laughs> Just for a weekend, clear our heads, to forget about our crappy jobs. <laughs> I know a nice estate park that we can go to. You heard there's uh, Gandalf auditions down here? <laughs> what do we want? Immortality? When do we want it? Now! They have to go through all of these things to learn a lot of lessons. Uh, any moment this is going to kick off into like a raucous New Orleans style funeral. <laughs> 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 All this time, they're being followed by the lady with the monkey. There's the ceremony of death and rebirth. Surrender what you hate, what you desire. The grave is the door to your rebirth. All right, improv camp is over. You have all graduated to level two. <laughs> it's time to sail to the island of the Holy Mountain. Wow, you can get a monkey to paddle a boat. They get to the island. Bravo, bravo. I drink alone. Just like George Thorogood. <laughs> and they go to the Pantheon Bar, where they see a variety of sights. Say hello to Frank Zappa. <laughs> they talk to a variety of weirdos and fools, and they decide to leave because there's nothing for them there. Then they start the trek up the mountain. They have to do some serious climbing. One of the people, they get freaked out, but she learns that all she has to do is rub her naughties against the mountain and she can gain mastery over her fears. That's a lesson for all of you out there. Our group scales the holy mountain. It's a tough journey, but they make it to the top. The alchemist informs them. Our mind will decompose and we will suffer the vision of death. As they walk along, they have a variety of strange hallucinations, each one stranger than the last. Mario wins! <laughs> I really don't like late period Miles Davis. I hope these actors were paid more than scale. Because <laughs> if they weren't, this movie isn't exactly a resume builder. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing is worth it just to see that. Soon, they see the immortals. Before they can attack, the alchemist informs our hero that he should leave. Go live with the lady and the monkey. Because love is more important than immortality. The rest of the crew go to the immortals. That's that rooster so sound you always hear when there's a rooster sound. You mean a rooster? <laughs> <laughs> and they find out there are no immortals. It was a big joke by the alchemist. He's ready to teach them the final lesson. This isn't real life at all. This is a film. Zumba camera. That's right. Show them the cameras and the crew and everything. Now it's time to go off and live real life. Well, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Enlightenment just isn't worth it. Surely you've learned <laughs> something here. Tona, pull back. Pull back. <laughs> Turn it off. Nothing has an end. Fortunately for us and our sanity, the Holy Mountain does. Yes. Not to say that I didn't enjoy it and wasn't fascinated by it, but it's a lot to take all at once. Like a lot of surrealist movies, I think it has a very simple message told in a very strange and complicated way. Before we get into that, I want to emphasize to the home audience that we talk about these movies about 15 minutes after we're done watching them, and this is one of the times where I'm like, 
Wow, I kind of wish I had a week left to just kind of reflect on it. I think I got it. Okay, go. Okay. The movie is grotesque because society is grotesque. Life is grotesque. Our bodies are grotesque. Yes, yeah. it's also grotesque because of the upper classes and exploitation of the poor. That's what the Colonialism. Pe- right, that's what the people on their planet represents. They're all industrialists. They're all people in authority. And they all are unfulfilled and they cause misery. The whole way to live life is to shed all of that and not so much go back to nature, but just have real experiences and deep experiences. And there's not really one way to do this. There is no holy mountain. The way to do this is to just live life. I think that's the the message of the movie. I think the message of the movie is don't do drugs, kids. But if you do, watch this movie. (laughs) The Thieves' Reward is not enlightenment because he has love. Right. Of a woman and a monkey. <laughs> and then you'll be happy. It's like the end of Candide. You can search all over the world for what it's all about, but really in the end you have to just, you know, tend your own garden. I think it all comes down to one quote. You are excrement. You can change yourself into gold. That's a little trite, particularly with how literal the imagery is. Not since... Green Day's 1994 debut has so much gold been made out of Dookie. (laughs) Boonwell and Salvador Dali probably caught this movie together one night because they were both alive at the time. Sure, sure. And they're like, this is what we started. The point of the images, especially the intensity of them and the grotesquery of them, is not to stimulate your brain, but it's to punch you in the gut Mm -hmm. and give you a visceral experience. Yes, and I wouldn't say punch you in the gut. It's punching you in the eye. Oh, it was punching me in the gut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, a little stomach turning uh, mm-hmm. at, at time, often at yeah. times. I wouldn't say that this movie had nudity. I would say it had nudity! <laughs> it's not erotica. Even when it's presented as such. Mm-hmm. You know, there are certain scenes where guys are like, oh, oh well, yeah. I'm going to get some of that. Society makes sex gross. Sex is a beautiful, natural thing, but when you objectify it, when you sensationalize it, it, it becomes exaggerated and not something that is appealing. I think you can look at it the opposite way is if you really, really, really look at sex, it just stops being appealing. Hmm. That it is like the one cow mounting the other cow. And it's like we're all just a bunch of cows or whatever. Holy Mountain reminded me of another film with a very similar title beginning with Holy Mo. Tours. Exactly. They both end with a man going off to live with a monkey. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so the movie is laden with symbolism, with astrology and tarot and sex and death and Christ and eyeballs. What were the images that really stuck with you? There's the shot where he wakes up in the potato room. The rainbow hallway. That's mm-hmm. just a beautiful shot. I mean, I could watch that all day long. And it was such a break because everything before them was so dirty and gross. Mm-hmm. And we felt like, okay, we've now we've gotten above that. We're in a holy place. We're in a place where extraordinary things happen. And that was really exciting. Yeah, and also that is the point of the movie where you see a character from before. You see the guy from the beginning of the movie and you're like, oh, this is all going to come together. Like when they go to the restaurant at the end of Pulp Fiction, it's like, oh, we're back at the beginning. It's okay, things are going to really connect now. I loved uh, on Neptune where the police killed all the protesters but they just dumped paint on them. It looks so much like when you see images of war except that the guns are just paint guns. It was so uh, uh, disarming. And just that closing shot of the smoke coming in Mm. over Axon. Sure, sure. This is just like, what do you get for the man who has everything? What movie do you get for the person who's seen everything? Sure. Because they haven't seen the Holy Mountain. Well, final thoughts on the Holy Mountain. Great. (laughs) We're glad you joined us for this movie. We hope your mind wasn't bended too much. But we hope it was bent a little. In the words of the alchemist, there is no holy mountain. So instead, go to our website, loveintothebasementshow.com. You can see every episode we've ever made. And there's a PayPal donation button. You can click on it and donate some dollars to support our show. Our show is viewer-sponsored. Anything you can contribute really helps us out. We've had some viewers do this, Craig. Yes. Deanna, who says, you guys make my day a lot better. Casey, Ruben. Will, who says, last year was a crazy year. The videos have been an entertainment and confidant throughout. Austin, AJ, Michaela, I'm donating this in honor of my roommate Robin Felton's 21st birthday on May 16th. Happy birthday. A big old thumb kiss from Kenosha. And Maximilian, who says, dear Matt, Craig, and of course, Tona, 
I have to thank you three greatly for all the great episodes and insightful discussions between Matt and Craig. You really changed my life in a big way. He goes on to write a very nice note about various directors we've introduced him to, books he's now reading because of our show. And uh, that's great. Maximilian, thanks for the kind words, and we're happy to help out. Thank you. And I can't forget to mention our monthly donors. These people have set up rolling donations. They donate a certain amount every month. What a great thing to do. Patricia, Edward, Corey, Stephanie, Jason, Samantha, Kyle, Stephanie, Sierra, George, Tammy, Danielle, Patrick, Joe, Michael, Brian, Steve, Lee, Michael, Jacqueline, David, and Daniel. Your generosity... (coughs) Your generosity will not be forgotten. Gonna open up our mailbag. We got postcards. Patrick, there you go. Ferella or Fenella, I think this is from Lisbon. She writes a little Bob Dylan quote on there for you. Oh, thank you. Matthew Berkey, who says we should bring back Foreign Film Month. We just watched a foreign film tonight, buddy. All for you. (laughs) And, of course, Michael U.S. Bonds. He sent another one. He says now he's gonna keep sending these until we watch one of the movies that's on his postcard. So that may happen. Who knows? Thanks for sending us postcards. We really love getting them. And now it's time for a scene it. The theme for tonight's scene it is audience appreciation. All the scene it's were provided by our viewers. That's all the scene it's we ever do. I know. I was just <laughs> seeing if you were paying attention. Mara Langenberger asks, Cairo, Nest of Spies. It features my favorite French comedian, Jean Dujardin. Jean Dujardin. <laughs> you know, the guy from The Artist. And I feel like you might hate them. Seen it, and you're wrong. I really enjoyed that movie. I've actually seen both of them. Yes? It's a nice satire of a very specific era of film. The comedy does fall flat at times, particularly in the first movie, but I think the second one is better. They get the look of the 1960s or early 70s perfectly. The Third World Gamer. Here's what I've watched. John Wick. Seen it. Have I seen it? You're goddamn right I've seen it. Well, you have some strong feelings about John Wick. Go. It is a blast. It's an action movie, just how you want action movies to be. But there's one thing I wish that the movie didn't have. What's that? The Dead Wife. If you do a summary of John Wick, it's World's Greatest Assassin goes out on a roaring rampage of revenge because somebody killed his dog. His wife is totally superfluous to it. I don't think that at all. You don't? The the attachment to the wife is the emotional core of the revenge uh, rampage. But the movie is a cartoon about revenge rampages. You may as well just make it about dogs. And as a dog lover, I think that is enough of a reason for the world's greatest assassin to kill everyone. Nobody's going to do that based on the death of a dog that they've had for one day. I know. There has to be an attachment that's that's deeper than that. That's a problem with it, too. It should have been his old pal, the dog, as opposed to his wife's dying wish to give him a dog. It's like, that that seemed more contrived than any number of the very complex ways that he killed people in the movie. Uh, I, I disagree. I, I, I think the wife is necessary. And, the, and having the dead wife doesn't really take anything away from the film. No, but it doesn't add anything to it either. I would have preferred mm. a few more female it, it assassins gives mo- It gives him motivation. It gives him motivation. A dog is motivation enough. You're a pet owner. I know I'm a pet yes. owner. I'm and not an assassin. The main reason I like this movie is because I get to see Theon Greyjoy again get an ass whooping. <laughs> Always a pleasure to see you get beat up. You and Paul Dano. Yes, you're our new Paul <laughs> Dano. <laughs> Bull to this hit writes, Please review The Duelist 1977 and seen it. We will, because I've seen it. <laughs> seen it. Ridley Scott's first movie. You recommended this to me, and I watched it, and I was really blown away. Yeah. Even with the high expectation bar that you set. What makes it really amazing is that it's based on a true story, and they had to water it down to make it believable. <laughs> it's a crazy amount of duels, and they just can't kill each other. So it's like watching a dramatic version of Spy vs. Spy. Right, right. One spiffing gent writes, I'm an enormous fan of British gangster films, my eternal favorite being Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. So I'd like to hear your opinion of this film and your best recommendations for this genre. I want my ganja back. Seen it. Seen it. I would say probably my biggest recommendation would be Guy Ritchie's follow-up, Snatch, which is almost a sequel of sorts. It's got uh, Vinnie Jones and uh, Jason Statham, and I think Snatch is a better film. I prefer Snatch 2 mostly because I remember it more. They kind of seem... yeah. When I look back at them, I'm like, oh yeah, that's the one with the gun and the boxing match and the dog. And Boris the and Bullet the Dodger. Pots. Yeah. Beyond that, I would say Stephen Fear is the hit. You're a big fan of the Long Good Friday. Which is this movie without any comedy at all. <laughs> it's so interesting that every culture has its own gangster genre. 
And they're all different. Yeah. There's Japanese gangster films are different from British gangster films, which are different from Hong American Kong, gangster yeah. films. Well, we've talked about everything except Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Do we have anything to, more to say about that? Yeah, it's a good time. It's a really good time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's seen it. And that's our show. Thanks for joining us in the trippy world of the Holy Mountain. It's definitely worth checking out if you have not seen it. If you dare. That's the end of Audience Appreciation Month, but really every month here on the show is Audience Appreciation Month. Uh, but really every month here in the basement is Audience Appreciation Month because we so much appreciate our audience. You coming back, watching our episodes, uh, just it's, it's great to put on this show for you. And we'll be back in two weeks to appreciate you some more. Until then, good night. Good night. Honey, should we see The Sting tonight or this holy movie? I know you like holy things, but I like Robert Redford. Let's see the holy movie. All right. Two hours later. Oh, I'm leaving you. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> you are excrement. You can change yourself into gold. <laughs>